looks like an age of reason. We're here to talk about something serious. Something that's maybe a matter of life. As you can see from my surroundings, death. I'm going to talk about the uh, conflict going on in Palestine and Israel. And I'm going to just bring a few ideas forward, which are just opinions. They're not policy, they're not laws, they're not anything, just opinions. Uh, because I don't think America is getting a full story of the whole thing. <clears throat> From what I've seen, for instance, an interview with the head of Israeli, a Palestinian, and a Fox News host for a little talk and debate. At a certain point, it got to where the Fox host asked the Palestinian, is Hamas a terrorist organization? And the Palestinian wanted to put some context around that question which he was forbidden to. He was told he only could answer yes or no, as if it was some kind of court of law. And there is a context around it, a local context, a historical context, a social context, a religious context, but that wasn't allowed to be brought forth. So basically, the Palestinian kind of skirted the issue and get into arguments with this host and wouldn't say yes or no. And so it was pretty pointless overall. I think the Palestinian guest should have said no. And then the host would have had to either accept it and shut up or want to debate it. And that's how you could get more of your part of the story in the debate after saying no, which is not what he wanted to hear. So then you could go in and say more about how governments are, are elected. It's democracy. It's elected and it's violent, which goes for Palestine, Israel, America, any nation pretty much. But you have Israel and Palestine mixed together and so the battle ensues. To which I want to bring forward something else. Israel has called itself the Jewish state, which to me is a religious term and it implies that they might give heedance to a book called the Torah. And one of the main policies of the Torah was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This was meant to kind of regulate revenge. It is not meant as a minimum of revenge. It was meant to be the maximum revenge. So if somebody knocks a tooth out, you're supposed to knock the tooth out of the offender. That sort of thing an even and matched response. I don't know, but when I look at the Israel response to Hamas uh, and the Palestine people, I do not see that as being an eye for an eye, two for two. Look at the casualty count. Look at the grade and level of injury in the victims, the civilians. So, to me, it is not a matter of an eye for an eye, two for two. What Palestine does is wrong. But little rockets that are not guided and hit randomly about, to me, is vandalism. And it requires a response of litigation, not war. But that's my opinion. The other thing is... <clears throat> At some point, the sides are going to have to reconcile. There's, there's either reconcile or not to reconcile. And if you don't reconcile, you're looking at what some would call the final solution is the end game. We know where that ends. And even if Israel 
tactically wins the final solution and they eliminate Palestinians. They've lost, perhaps strategically. They've lost mind share. They've lost reputation. So, they're actually behaving much like the Nazis did to the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto. It's funny that they should emulate those people that persecuted them. They actually are doing similar to what America has done to Native Americans, and probably still is doing. And the point is that taking away from a group of people, oppressing them, damaging their houses, their schools, their power plants, their water supply. That's not an eye for an eye. That's for you're trying to deliberately destroy the infrastructure of a nation. So, that's something we'll just float out there. It would be much better for them to reconcile both sides. So, Palestine has done some vandalism damage and injured some people. I think they should pay a legal price for that. Likewise, I think Israel has damaged some buildings and infrastructure in Palestine, and I think they're obligated to rebuild that. So that way they can be reconciled. If you don't have that in there, if you don't have Palestine officially and legally recognizing Israel's right to exist as a nation, if you don't have Israel officially and legally recognizing Palestine's right to exist, you're not going to get anywhere. They have to recognize each other and they have to get along. They're living right next to each other, they're neighbors. It's not like you can get a judge to issue a declaration, what do they call that? A special court order to keep them apart? That's not going to happen. It's not, it's not feasible, exactly. I mean, if you could do it, that would be the main solution, but... What is your ideas on the matter? You can comment below. And until later, we'll be seeing you.